Hello to artists of all types. My name is Ian, and on this channel, I review the greatest books ever written, provide actionable steps for artists to transform their life and pursue the artistic path, and help you guys take all this information and transform the world with it. So, how are you guys doing? Today we are covering one of the best artistic manifestos of all time, The Art Spirit by Robert Henry. And I would really encourage everybody to go read this. And if you aren't, then that's what this video is for because I'm pulling all the best ideas, the best quotes and giving it to you so that you can take that information and change the world with it. So I'm sure as you know, an artistic path is hard. Unless you were that person who made it big and accomplished all their dreams really early with art, then cool, maybe you don't need this. But for everyone else who is on that grind, who is struggling to create the life of their dreams through art, to transform the world through their art, Robert Henry has a lot of good information for you guys because I know all of the pain you are feeling. The pain of feeling unknown, unnoticed, underpaid, not even recognized by your peers, the criticism that you get from your parents, your family, your friends, society in general, people not understanding you, having a vision or having an art that isn't even understood by society yet. But today we are talking about Robert Henry, who was an American painter who lived from 1870 to around into the 1920s, don't have those years correct. And here's an example of some of his art. He was an impressionist painter. So, you know, this beautiful type of art. I love this stuff. I love going to art music, all the old impressionist work. So let's hop right into the right into some of the quotes from the text though. So first we have, and we're just gonna start at the start of the quotes that I started compiling. Understand that in no work will you find the final word, nor will you find a receipt that will fit just you. The fun of living is that we have to make ourselves after all. And there comes a point, right, that one of the best things that you can do to really level up your game as a beginner is to imitate, right? If you're a writer, you imitate other writers. You write a couple paragraphs that you like from a writer and rewrite it in a different way. With art, you can copy people, you can learn the tricks of the trade that way, but at some point you have to make that clean break or you're always just going to be a simulacra, a copy of a copy. At some point you have to become your own artist. And that's what really this book is about, that it is painful because I know a ton of people who actually make money and are living as artists or writers, but they're really just copying. They have a system, they have a formula, they can turn out so many pieces of work that they know is quality because it's been the formula has been used before and they're scared to branch off because maybe they tried branching off and writing or doing their own work and it didn't work they had some failure but it takes time just like these the formulas have to be cr not just formed on your end but formed with an audience you have to maybe even enlighten an audience to what you're doing next quote the man who has honesty integrity the love of inquiry the desire to see beyond is ready to appreciate art he needs no one to give him an art education. He's already qualified. He needs but to see pictures with his active mind, look into them for the things that belong to him. And that's what it takes to become an artist. Really, anyone could become an artist. There are people out there who think that being an that it's only for the talented. And at some level it is because to really break through, to gain that success in early life, it, it, you have to those are the talented people, the people that you saw in high school who were really good at drawing or really good at writing and have the jobs or the or have the careers. A lot of that is talent, but there's another group of individuals like I'm trying to be in that progress into the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s who maybe don't have as much talent, but then surpass all these other people who got complacent. And that's what happens to everybody. You look at Einstein and all these other people who sucked, who didn't have the talent. You have to put in those 10,000 hours. That's what I'm trying to do with this YouTube channel. Here I am, 100 something videos later, and only have 10,000 views. I feel like I'm producing great quality. Maybe I'm not, I'm trying to keep improving at 1% every single video. But I know that in the long run, if I keep doing this for 30 years, I'll surpass all the booktube people with the nice aesthetics and they're hot or whatever the hell's going on in that realm. You know, the ed ed edu edutainment realm. So you have to, have an active mind. That's really the summarization of that quote. An active mind is so important. He's already qualified. He needs but to see pictures with his active mind. Look into them for the things that belong to him. And that's the same with writing and any other art. You have to use direct experience and then use your subjective reality perspective to take that and form that into your own art. Thus, art, right? Next, the work of art is a result, is the output of a progress in development and stands as a record and marks the degree of development is not an end in itself, but the work indicates the course taken and progress made. The work is not a fidelity, 
It is the impress of those who live in a full play of their faculty. The individual passes, living his life, and the things that he touches receive his kind of impress, and they afterwards bear the trace of his passing to give evidence of the quality of his growth. And that's something that a lot of people don't get stuck in. They don't ship their creative work. You have to ship. I mean, you have to publish and send out into the world your creativity. A lot of people get stuck in perfectionism or thinking that they need to sit forever and not do anything with that. No, you need to ship and get it out. Get it out. It's a res your progress will show. Look at your the first art or writing, whatever that you ever did. First pieces, they suck. You can see that progress and people will see that progress too. If you look at the first movies of a lot of great artists or of directors or first books, they kind of suck, but it's fun to watch people get better. We want to understand the storyline, especially in 2022. What do you think vlogs are? What do you think all these different mediums are? We watch people progress and we want to see their journeys. We don't care about you being an expert as much anymore. There are a million experts out there. There are a billion pieces of art and writing out there already. The storyline is important now. And telling people where you're at and making progress and letting people follow that and be a part of that is actually a really important thing that I think a lot of people take for granted. Strokes carry a message whether you will, you will it or not. The stroke is just like an artist at the time he makes it. All the certainties, all the uncertainties, all the uncertainties, all the bigness of his spirit, and all the littleness are in it. And that's really, you know, every single sentence, every single stroke of the pen or the brush, there is a message in it. There are, and there is energy, fragments of energy in every single thing we do, every word we say. And I think that's a really cool thing about art that, and life, that if you want to take the warrior path and live a spiritual and conscious life, every single action has intent, has the risk of life or death or any possibility in every single action we take. Maybe someone listening to the words right now, I'm saying right now could do something insane. You know, I'm putting myself out there and to the possibility of everything. Beauty is no material thing. Beauty cannot be copied. Beauty is the sensation of pleasure on the mind of the sea. No thing is beautiful, but all things await the sensitive and imaginative mind that may be aroused to pleasurable emotion at the sight of them. This is beauty. Once again, it's this aesthetic mind. It's the active mind and the co-creation. When you sensitive and imaginative mind there's this co-creative thing that happens we just don't see the world we are the world sees us back we're that's with art too the words aren't just on the page they are interacting with us there is a co-creative relationship with everything that we do in art and in life every individual should study his own individuality to the end of knowing his tastes should cultivate the pleasures so discovered and find the most direct means of expressing those pleasures to others thereby enjoying them over and over again art is Art often is all but an extension of the expression of sensations too subtle for words. And we'll just read the next two. See without limits. All outward success, when it has value, is but the inevitable result of an inward success of full living, full play, and enjoying one's faculties. And this is at a time, right, when Rilke, the famous modernist poet living around this time, he said, you must change your life to create good art. That if you want to make better art, you, may, you maybe need to live more. That There's a ton of people, a ton of authors, a ton of artists who kind of have flat art because they haven't lived enough. They haven't had enough direct experience, but you know, because of the fluff government grant money or universities, they can kind of slide by or just because of good marketing, they can kind of slide by, but that's where their art feels flat because they haven't lived enough. They haven't taken that experience and combined it with their skills. Either their skills not good enough or their experience isn't good enough. And that's something that you can do is that you, there are people and artists who don't have a daily habit of writing, don't have a daily habit of art. They've kind of built up a base level of skill and they're trying to max out their experience and thus their art gets better. It's kind of this weird thing that we hear that we need to do these 10,000 hours and maybe you do initially, but once you have that down, how much better can you really get at these things? Really it's about finding what you want to put onto the page more so than improving the craft, even though you should always be improving your craft. The value of school should be in the meeting of students. The true artist regards his work as a means of talking with men, of saying him, his say to himself and others. So that's a, an important thing that school of all types, university, a lot of people go to university, right? Should be about meeting other students and connecting with your professors, connecting with people who are in to what you are into. That's what really school is for. That's what the, all the value that I got at school wasn't in the books. It wasn't in the writing, wasn't in the essays. It was the connection I had with my professors and friends that I made. And I can't imagine that I, I know 99% of people who go to university never go and talk to their professors, especially every single one. I would make sure to talk to every single one of my professors at their office hours and talk to them about deeper information, what they learn, what they know, 
and connect with them. Try to talk to students in the class who are those kids. You know, in every single class, there's another person like you or in every single workshop or meeting, there's another person with an active mind, even if the rest of the room is dead and doesn't care and is there just for a result or a purpose. There is always another person out there. So you have to connect with them. You have to find them. And that's how you grow. The mo Like I said, the most growth I've had in my life is through mostly networking and through connections, even though you know my own journey is important. Connecting with others really takes you to the next level. It can motivate you to keep pushing further, especially at the start with art and stuff, having people around you to encourage you and to get better with and to compete against, even though you're not supposed to compete in art, but to see someone and be like, wow, they're really good. I want to be like them. I want to hit that level. Wow, this person's just like me. I remember with writing, I would be like that. I'd go into a class and there would be, I remember there was this one girl named Callie and Callie was, I was maybe 23 and she was like 19 and she was a better writer than me. Point and Blake, a better storyteller. Like she had it. And I saw what she was doing. I saw her mindset and I kind of shifted a little bit. I was like, okay. And I aligned myself with her. I went to a couple workshops with her and talked to her, you know, and hung out with her a couple times. Don't know where she's at now. Shout out Callie. But that helped me progress. That, that took me to the next level. I really, if you look at my writing, there was nothing except my relationship with her took me to another level of the game. So that, and that has happened multiple times with people on across my whole life. Think about a coach, think about, you go and find, if you're doing yoga by yourself for five years and you go get a really good yoga teacher, they can make you, they can take you levels above where you were in just a month. So age must not, and obviously see without limits, that's self -explanatory. Age need not destroy beauty. There are people who grow more beautiful as they grow older. If age means to them an expansion and development of character, this new mental and spiritual state will have its effect on the physical. Face, which in the early days was not only pretty or even dull, will be transformed. And that art really does that to a mind and to a soul. If you really get into art, it can transform me, especially if you're doing it for light, because there are people out there who are grumbly about art. I've, you know, it's kind of a prerequisite when you are an artist. I, I feel like on the path at some point, you're going to meet someone that you admire and they're just a grumbly, weird, rude person. I remember that happened with a certain beat poet who I'm, we don't name, I guess name drop him. He's dead now. He was very mean to me. I remember going up to him after one of his workshops and trying to talk to him. He was grumbling at me and kind of being weird and like just trying to sign my book and send me on down the line. And I wasn't trying to have a, I was trying to have a 30 second conversation here as an 18 or 19 year old guy. And it kind of, it hurt, you know, it made me feel bad. It made me feel angry. I felt kind of bad about it. And I was like, why would you show up to this event if you're not, you don't go into a public event in 2000 and you know in the two you know, probably 2014 if you don't want to take photos if you don't want to talk to people why are you showing up oh i don't take photos oh i don't do, do this i don't answer questions why are you here then what are you doing and eventually you're going to realize that people are just rude people have these boundaries but if you want to have boundaries then stay at home if you want to have boundaries and be a public figure then don't be a public figure who comes to an event and is making people pay money for their books and like do you know what i mean like I understand that if I was at a restaurant and I saw him at a restaurant and went up to him, then he that's fine. He can be grumbly. I'm interrupting his personal space. But if you come to something you need, don't be that artist. Don't be the artist who doesn't take photos with people and talk to people at an event that you are putting on or getting paid for. That's what you are there for. I mean, that's just my opinion. Like I said, if you want handle your personal life the way you want to, but your, uh, your know, professional life, that people will remember that. I will talk crap about that guy for the rest of my life, man, because of how he treated me. And make, you know, anyway. You can do anything you want to do. What is rare is this actual wanting. And you know, you're like, well, why, why is that a problem? Oh, he doesn't want to take a picture or talk to me. Because if I look up his name online right now, he has photos with thousands of people online. He has had conversations with millions of people. I'm just not good enough. I'm just not good enough for him anymore. If I was, you know, a famous author or a famous person, oh yeah, sure, come on over, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's about these ranks and these hierarchies that these people create, which I think is wrong. You can do anything you want to do. What is rare is this actual wanting to do a specific thing, wanting it so much that you are practically blind to all other things, that nothing else will satisfy you when you, body and soul, wish to make a certain expression and can be distracted from this desire, then you will be able to make great use of whatever technical knowledge you have. You will have clairvoyance. You will see the uses of the technique you already have, and you will invent more. And this is what happens when you have that burning desire, the first principle really of everything in life. You have to have that burning desire. If you do not have that burning desire, you will not progress. You will not make it in life. I'm sorry to say, you will not get to where you want to go if, or, or as far as you could if you don't have that burning desire. And when you have that, doors open. That's what they say, that blindness or excuse me, scarcity is a blindness to opportunity. And I feel like just having a motivation and desire opens up a lot of those doors and kills a lot of that scarcity fog.
The pursuit of happiness is a great activity. One must be open and alive. It is a great feat of man ha a great feat a man has to accomplish and spirits must flow. There must be courage. There must be n no easy ruts to get into which lead to happiness. Man must become interesting to himself and most become actually expressive before he can be happy. And that's an important thing that you have to it's almost like you have to fake it before you can make it, man. The pursuit of happiness is a totally different thing. Once again, I know so many artists who aren't alive, who don't happiness, don't have that. They don't let their spirit flow. They don't let it out of their soul. They are sad and these sad boys, all these new sad boy artists and hipsters and people. Dude, grow the grow up, man. Literally, I hate to say that. I don't want to sound like some weird conservative or something, but like grow up and live life. You're not a victim. Like obviously we are all victims. You've maybe been hurt and traumatized, but at some point, are you going to be happy? All these depressed people, man. There are people who have been through the worst things in life, torture, concentration camps, the whole number and still found happiness and here you are living, but that's it. That's it. These, these are conscious choices and you know, this is kind of, I don't want to go on this, you know, because then people will say, oh, depression. it's a disease. I don't care. Do you want it or do you not want it? Do you want, do you have this burning desire? There is no one out there who has a burning desire for happiness who is not, who is not happy. If you keep that in your heart and you go to do it every single day and pursue that and live it, and it's a great activity, like he says, if you do that and surround yourself, you may have depressed days. You may have down streaks in life. You may have some dark nights of the soul or having to do some shadow work, but overall there's going to be a general theme of happiness in your life. Not this general theme of negligence that we have now. It's because we're stuck in these boxes, man. We don't let the spirit flow. We don't let nature touch us or the sun or vitamin D or exercise or any of these things because we're freaking weird now, man. We don't have any of that anymore. And it really is sad. Each genius differs only from the mass in that he has found freedom for his greatness. The greatness is everywhere, in every man, in every child. What our civilization is busy doing, mainly, is smothering greatness. It is a strange anomaly. We destroy what we love and we reverence what we destroy. And this, once again, this is a huge part of the sad boy culture right now that we haven't learned to praise. I talk about this all the time on the channel that learning to praise and stand on the shoulder of the stand on the shoulders of the greats is so important. The freedom that he's talking about and greatness is getting is finding clarity in who you are. The only difference is that he has found freedom for his greatness. We all have this greatness within us, but we have to find that. And sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you have to push and shove society your your life or your circumstances to find that it's hard to find your spot to find your slot and i think it exists for everyone you know another critique to the artistic life is everyone can't be artists we can't yes we can because if everyone is an artist we would innovate to the point of singularity and to and so we wouldn't need to actually work anymore to be in this scarcity environment we'd have an abundance economy pretty fast if everybody utilized their time if you work 40 hours a week and sleep eight hours a night over the 15 over the next 15 years we all have over 50,000 hours of free time let's cut 30,000 hours of that off right now for whatever excuses you have family this that because you know those 50,000 hours mean that you are you've slept and you are paying the bills so the two largest excuses I'm too tired I don't feel good or I have to pay the bills in those 20,000 hours left, if not 50,000 hours, that's two skills in 15 years that you could be a master at, not just a master, but have released work in that medium. 20,000 hours is a ton of time. And if you learn to control your life, that could be turned into 30,000, 40,000 hours. And if you slice away that other 40 hours a, work, a week, you have to work. That's insane. If you can learn to make enough money over 15 years, you won't need that 40 hours anymore a week. So that is that quote. An artist must first of all respond to a subject. He must be filled with emotion toward that subject and then he must make his technique so sincere, so translucent that it, mu that it may be forgotten. The veil of the subject shining through. It's the subject, once again, it comes back to this co-creative experience that you can force art. A lot of writers and artists do that now. Once again, do this now. There is a path now to make money in art, especially with like, for instance, writers. You know, you log on to Kindle and you search the bestsellers list. You find a hole in the market and maybe it's Western sci-fi or Bigfoot erotica. And you fill the hole with, you know, books that are a certain length, audiobooks. And if you do that enough and build a small email list, then you can make a living. Or, you know, if art, you know, if a certain type of art selling, maybe stock images or stock art or stock animations, you make it spend a time, a bunch of time making those. And that's good for a time, but that's not sustainable. That's actually not building a real audience that's based on the reaction. People looking for Bigfoot erotica 
our small but maybe unfulfilled market but people looking for great art is a huge market that's still unsaturated that's what people don't realize is about having to niche down you can niche down and that's great but then you can expand out of that niche maybe once you have the audience and then make a jump into the larger larger field told the spirit of greatness is in my mind what the world was created for the human body is beautiful as the spirit shines through and art is great as it translates and embodies this spirit kind of coming back to this very modernist Nietzschean idea of greatness that these are all my people and that all I have to these are my people and all that I have to owe to them that these artists I mean excuse me your audience this is what you have to owe to them you have a gift to be great a lot of people fall short on that path of greatness much can be done with little we are troubled okay and we'll, we'll talk about that one you can do a lot like now with videos right all you need is an iPhone the audio is pretty good. You might be able to upgrade for a microphone for $100. A lot of video editing software is free. Computers are fast enough to handle the footage. You can do a lot with a small amount of money now. Writing is almost always free. You can commission an artist to share royalties or you know, take a class on how to use Photoshop for free online and create your own crappy book cover. You can learn book formatting for free. Everything now can basically be done for free. Good cameras. You can get a cinematic level camera with a nice lens for under $3,000 now, if not way less, you know, you could do it for under 2,000 or even for a thousand, depending on how good you are. But for under $3,000, you have no experience. Within a year, you can make a cinematic level piece with just a, you know, $3,000 worth of equipment. That's insane. Back in the day, you would have to have, you know, reels and expensive cameras and lighting. Nope, you might just need a couple pieces of lighting equipment and then a video editing, some video editing software and your camera and lens and a microphone. That's all you need now. Art, you know, there's so many tutorials online. We can do so much now with what we have and literally become, go from nothing into something. Back in the day, it was all this luck stuff. But now, once again, I was talking about if you're not talented, if you aren't the right art type that to fill, to fill the, you know, the generational gap, you know, every single generation, there are certain people who fill the aesthetic and they can rise really fast to the top. But if you're not that, through the brute force method of you just sticking in this, for decades, you can rise and build an audience, but you can't give up. You might have to give up some things. You might have to give up a family for a little bit. You might have to give up dating or having a stable living situation, but we are troubled by having two selves, the inner and the outer. The outer is rather dull and lets great things go by. This outer self that we have has been programmed. It's been, it's rigid. It has to be rigid in the schizophrenic capitalist society. We it cannot intake art very well, but I am not interested in art. Quote, these are all quotes as a means of making a living, but I am interested in art as a means of living a life. And that's what it comes back to. What, this video, I learned about this book from David Lynch, the director, and he really walks the walk. All he does is create. He tries to make a life. He eats the same things, wears the same stuff, has a schedule of just basically, you know, probably a little bit of eating every day and the rest is just him meditating or creating. That's what the artistic life is at some level. And you may have kids, but kids are, you know, not that long of a commitment. What's 20 years, you know? If you have kids at 35, by the time you're 55, and a lot even earlier before that, the whole time even, but by 55, you can be back to the work again. People like David Lynch and other filmmakers are still creating art into their 70s and 80s now. Cormac McCarthy, my favorite author, I think he's in his late 80s and he's releasing two new novels this upcoming year. Late 80s. Who knows, he might be moving. He, if he can get one more out, it might be into his 90s that he's still writing and still producing. That's pretty cool. The reasons so many artists have lived to a great age and have been so young at great age is to such extent they have lived living, whereas most people live dying. And that's what happens, like we talked about earlier. If you really become a great artist, you live life. You have multitudes of life within your own life. You experience so much more emotion than all the people who are trapped in this monotonous and redundant life. It's insane. And that you could see that spirit. It is the art spirit. It does something. Same with people who spend a lot of time in nature. It does something to you when you can wash all that away. Like to do what your work as much as a dog likes to gnaw on a bone and go at it with equal interest and extent of everything else. Talked about that before. You have to have that burning desire. Okay, this is a different font. I'll read it. Self-education is an effort to free one's course so that a full growth may become. Give your throat a chance to sing its song. All the knowledge in the world to which you have access is yours to use. Give yourself plenty of canvas room, plenty of paint room. Don't bother about your originality. Set yourself just as free as you can and your originality will take care of you. It'll be as much as a surprise to you as to anyone else. Originality cannot be preconceived and any effort to coddle it is to preconceive it and thereby destroy it. Learn all you can, get all the information that's within your reach about the ways and means. Educate yourself. Do not let me educate you. Use me. 
do not be used by me. That's what happens that so many artists, so many people out there become educated. They want to get educated instead of self-educating. The process of self-education looks similar. You take advice, you take criticism, you imitate, you do these things, you try to tackle and find your originality. But a lot of us, because of our complexes, the same reason why we have in America, the two-party system, the for the, you know the mother complex issues and the father complex issues, the polarity, the the boogeyman, the good versus evil, the classic dialect. We cannot be used. Our abandonment issues, our cosmic abandonment issues. Yes, if you don't even, a lot of people in this world have parental or familial abandonment issues, but we all have cosmic abandonment because we don't know where we came from. We don't know anything about really our reality. We kind of do, and we think we do. And if you meditate, you can tap into the ether and blah blah blah. But we've all been cosmically abandoned at some point. Because at some level because we can't prove anything. We're all just wandering around hoping to know what the hell is going on. So we want to be used. We want that knowledge. We want that protector. We want that savior, but that has to be us. We have to step into that realm of self-education and become that. It's vital because if you don't, you'll never know what your artistic potential could have become. It doesn't matter when you do it. It changes everything. It changes your perspective. And I think that's what a real artist does. And you see this all the time. That's why sometimes I have a problem with political poetry that now politics is so enshrined in our consciousness that so many artists out there let politics inform what they are doing too much. Yes, it's important to have political poetry and political art or whatever, but having that inform and shape how you think and sensing yourself about how you feel, it happens all the time to, for political correctness and all these different things. It's absolutely whack, these artists. And now you see it with the fashion and appearance of artists trying to act a certain way and everyone trying to be cool and the dyeing of the hair and the piercings and the tattoos, all that's fine. But doing it for any other reason or other than your own growth is silly. And it's just going to hold you back in the long run. Those who have lived and grown at least to some degree in the spirit of freedom are, are our creative artists. They have a wonderful time. They keep the world going. They must leave their trace in some way, paint, strobe, machinery, whatever. The importance of what they do is greater than anyone else, anyone estimates at that time. In face of a, com in a commercial world, there are thousands of lives wasted doing things not worth doing. Human spirit is sacrificed. More and more things are produced without a will in the creation, and more are consumed or used without a will in the consumption or the using. Yeah, it's sad, you know, it's not, it's, I don't want to come from, you know, when you talk about these things, you don't want to come from a very elitist point of view. I don't think Henry does here, but you know, the factory farm workers out there wasting their lives away, doing nothing, wasting on dumb jobs for commerce and then going home and watching sports and just not pulling out and having a bunch of kids and making them do the same thing and creating this multi-generational trauma and system that we don't need to exist in. We can exist in harmony with nature, but we can't do that with the GDP. All these things, we can do that with singularity and moving away from hierarchical structures. And yes, escaping the left and the right and the logical and saying, oh, how are we going to do that? How are we going to create a caring society? Well, get started, man. Go Google your name right now. Go Google your name and see what you've done. What have you done? How many results are coming up? How many lives are being changed? That I, I, I'm just getting started on that too. I want to be able to Google my name and say, whoa, look at that guy. That guy has changed millions of lives. Everyone out in the world has a message, has a gift, can change millions of lives, but they're not doing that. They just, oh, it's my family. It's just, all these low-level thinking, the family is important. It's important as a social fabric and structure and to create the moral code, but people don't even do that anymore. People just throw their kid in front of a freaking screen. We're not creating artists or moral thinkers or anybody anymore. We're creating a bunch of clones and we have been for a long time. We had a chance to escape. You know, for such a long time with the illiterate masses, they were just a bunch of random clones. And finally, we're now literate. We now have technology and nope, what are we gonna do with it? Tick tock, tick tock, Whew. Of course, it's not easy to go one's road because our education, we continually get off the track, our track, but the fight is a good one. And if there is, and there is joy in it, if there is any success at all, after all, the goal is not making art it is living a life. Those who live their lives will leave the stuff that is really art. Art is the result is the trace of those who have led their lives is interesting to use because we read, read the struggle and the degree of success, the man made in his struggle to live. The great quest is what is worthwhile. The majority of people have failed to ask themselves seriously enough and have failed to try seriously enough to answer this question. What is worthwhile? And this comes back to kind of Urs Becker's denial of death and the concept from Otto Ronk that we use art as a sense of immortalization, that this is the one thing that I'm going to be gone one day, but this video may live on forever. My art, whatever medium may inspire people. I can create a chain event. Working at McDonald's or doing these jobs, even just being a teacher, that really doesn't create these chain events like scalable content and art does now. It is unsurpassable in what it can do. 
And it's not easy. Like I said, most of us weren't bred for this. Most of us were not trained for this. Most of us don't even want this. We want that easy life. We want the white picket fence and the, the nice, nice husband and the kids and the pets and the easy life and the nice Tesla. No, you can get that, but it's to the degree of how much you open your heart to art and to your own inner potential. So this is the last slide, everybody. The most beautiful life possible, wherein, is, wherein there is no sortiness, is only attainable by effort. To be free, to be happy and fruitful, can only be attained through sacrifice of many common but overestimated things. And once again, it's what are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up having a family? Are you willing to give up your family, your friends who are keeping you down? Are you willing to give up money? That's the question an artist has to ask. Two different things, really. Can I risk creating art for the rest of my life and being misunderstood the whole time? Being an artist that gets no viewers, no traction, no love at all, no positivity. Because if you aren't at that level, then you need to stop and go work on yourself because I am ready right here to continue on with this struggle with my poetry and my writing and this channel, no matter what the result is, because I know over the course of the long term, if I keep connecting, it will be valuable. It may be not for this my, in my lifetime, but maybe for the next couple lifetimes, someone down the road somewhere, it may be valuable. But if I get too caught up in making it, caring what other people think, then I won't reach my highest potential. I won't put out what I really needed to put out. And that's what we really need to be doing. Same with money. Am I okay living in poverty for the rest of my life? Can I still be happy? And if you can't, then you need to think about it. You need to really dive down and think and read about, you know, and learn meditation and the Eastern arts. And am I okay doing this? I've had this channel once again, I think I've already said this for five years and I've gotten 10,000 views, 100 plus videos. I feel like I should have some more, but I'm not tripping. I'm going to continue the struggle, continue trying to educate the world. So next, real students go out, go out of beaten paths, whether beaten by themselves or by others and have adventures with the unknown. To be an artist is to construct. The artist is the man who leaves the crowd and goes pioneering. With him, there is an idea which is his life. A work of art is the trace of a magnificent struggle. Making that path through the jungle with the machete is going to be hard. I can't help you with that. It's on you. All I can do here is show you the door. Say, it is right here. Please, it's okay. Silence the noise. Silence everyone telling you that it isn't and walk through the door and see what's on the other side. And maybe I'll see you over there. Maybe we can connect in the artistic domain or in the creative domain, but we have to move through that space ourselves, man. And like I said, you might follow my path for a while, but every single path eventually goes away. All roads end and then you have to continue the journey or go back. You can go back, but we're not here to go back. It's a magnificent struggle in our life. I'm imagining the next 60 years of my life doing this. 28 years old right now till I'm 88 years old. It's not going to be easy. There are going to be days, but I want my a great life. I want and desire my goals to change the world, to end unnecessary suffering, to really be able to connect with nature and yoga and meditation, to maybe have a family, to maybe have multiple partners in a polyamorous relationship and really understand and connect and mess with the idea of love. These are things that I'm chasing. These are things that I'm trying to do. Same with you. What are you trying to do? What is this? But when I say those things, when I, I, I have that gut feeling that it's going to not be easy. This isn't going to be a walk in the park. It's not easy. And it's, you know, yeah. So thank you guys for watching. And if you guys are interested in this video, go watch this video on, sorry, on David Lynch's favorite books. And that's where I got inspired to read The Art Spirit by Robert Henry. Peace.